My job tonight is a complicated and difficult one, to introduce to you a legend. We all know the saying from Lord Acton that power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Sally Quinn has lived in the world of powerful people, but she is here tonight because she is our role model of the hope, the dream, the possibility that power could look very different if it is not corrupted. We all know that she has lived for a long time in the seat of power, a career in journalism, a unique form of power, I dare say, where the accumulation of prestige and power and influence is to be un overturned, disrupted. Journalists in Sally's world are those who search for the lies, who search for the abuses, who search for the deceptions of people in power. Sally has lived in that world and she has led it, not just with her extraordinary husband, Ben, who is in many respects the nation's icon of the power of journalism as the power to hold power to account. She in her own right is a great writer, a journalist who has worked in television and print, who has created new journalistic media on religion and faith, and led in some ways the struggle of women to break through into the powerful world of journalism through her own career. But tonight we celebrate an altogether different power. It's perhaps a power Sally didn't choose. It's the power of an advocate, of a mother, of someone who believes in a person that the culture treats as an outsider. In my view, it is a power that our entire nation needs to pay attention to right now. The power to see how foolish it is to create insiders and outsiders at all, especially by labeling and othering and humiliating those who are different. Tonight, yes. <clears throat> Tonight, Sally, we are thanking you not for your economic power or your beauty or your journalistic power or your power just in the world of influential people. No, in some ways we're thanking you for your solidarity with your son and your husband as outsiders and therefore as prophets, I dare say, of a different social order, a different political order, and maybe even, given your writing on religion and magic and the occult, maybe even a different religious order. This different order is all about the end of privilege and power whenever it insists, whenever it demands, whenever it relies on the need to other, other people. In other words, right, this is, this is a certain kind of power that is common and that we are here tonight to attack, to challenge, and to overturn. When people in power depend on making other people victims and scapegoats and outsiders for their own sustenance, they are the enemy of Sally Quinn and I dare say, get out of the way. She is going to find you and she is going to get you and your days are numbered. Yeah. <laughs> Sally, I think re remembering uh, that our nation was founded by outsiders, by people who most of the world saw as other, is exactly the challenge we have to recover today. This is the challenge to you. It's not just an honor you receive tonight, it is also a challenge to marshal the unforgiving pen of a journalist, the understanding you have of the ways of the powerful, and the clear-eyed love of a mother to restore the soul of our nation. A few years ago, Sally wrote about Quinn. Quinn doesn't go to church. This was a, a piece on faith. Quinn doesn't go to church, but he does believe. And he is, she wrote, if I may say, the kindest, most loving, most affectionate person I have ever known. Isn't that why we are recognizing Sally tonight as an advocate for people with different abilities? I don't even like the word disabilities anymore, diffabilities. Yes, we honor you as an advocate for them. 
but we honor you more as an advocate for a better us. Yes, a more beloved community, a more just country, maybe even a more integrity-filled planet. That's real power. And it is that power that, after all, doesn't corrupt, but rather lightens, reveals, and liberates. It is my great honor to present that lightening, liberating, and freeing advocate, Sally Quinn. Thank you very much. I'm really honored to have you introduce me, and I, I'm speechless at what you said. And, um, and I also want to thank Quinn, too, who is the light of my life, and um, who said to me when I came up here, Mom, I tried not to cry, <laughs> and so did I. Um, and I want to also thank every, all of you for being here tonight and, um, and NCLD and all the incredible work that you do. And I don't feel really that I should, um, I deserve this award, but um, um, Mimi Corcoran actually assigned me to find an honoree and I struck out three times. <laughs> Finally she said, it's you. <laughs> I want to tell you a, a little bit about Quinn. Uh, when Quinn was about six or seven years old, we, he was going to the lab school in Washington, which was a special school for young adult, for, well, for children with learning disabilities. And um, they said that we should take him to a psychiatrist. And so we went and he spent once a week with this woman psychiatrist. And then she said that she wanted to test him. And so, um, we said, fine, and she called us in, asked the test, and she said, um, well, I'm really sorry to tell you, but um, this is very bad news. Quinn um, did very badly on the test, and um, he will never go to high school. Um, he will never have a job. He will never have a relationship. And um, he needs to be institutionalized immediately. And I have taken the liberty of calling this place called Ivy Mount out in Bethesda, which was for children with severe learning challenges. And um, they will accept him in January. And I literally fell to the floor. I mean, Ben had to carry me out of the room. I was sobbing so hard. And I got it, and they got in the car, and um, I just, I couldn't, I was hysterical. And Ben just said, you know what? Screw her. She's wrong. <laughs> Actually, that's not, not exactly what he said. <laughs> So shortly after that, I was uh, planning to go to this uh, spa out in California called the Golden Door. And Ben just said I needed a break because um, it was after I had worn the same dirty yellow t-shirt for 10 days in a row and didn't wash my hair. And he felt that I needed <laughs> to get away. And so I went out to the Golden Door, and I got there the first day. I really hated, I'd never left Quinn for that long, ever, for a week, and I was really concerned about it. And I got out there, and the first day they said, you know, you really should walk the labyrinth. And I didn't know what a labyrinth was. I don't know whether you all do or not, but it's this kind of circle. Uh, it's a flat uh, circle that has a, a diagram. It sort of looks like a maze, only it's not because you find your way to the center of it, and the idea is that you then, you concentrate on something that you really care about or that is worrying you, and when you get into the center of the maze, you meditate and then you find clarity. And I thought it sounded like a lot of new age nonsense, but I decided to try it, and that evening we all went up and everybody in their robes, and there were torches and drumming, and you know, and I thought, oh please. Um, but I walked the labyrinth, and it was kind of interesting. I mean, I, was, I didn't quite know what to concentrate on, but, but we all did this together, and it was fine. But I was kind of curious about it, and so the next day, I went out um, into the um, labyrinth in the late afternoon by myself in the sunlight, and it was up on this rise, and um, it was in the middle of this huge... Um, 
uh, sort of a, a live oak tree, circle of beautiful live oak trees. So I silently walked the labyrinth, and then I went and sat down in the center of it, and I closed my eyes, and I began to meditate. And I was thinking the whole time about Quinn, and what to do about Quinn, and how to deal with Quinn. And I, ju I just didn't, I just felt so helpless and so alone. And I opened my eyes, and I looked up, and what did I see but the most magnificent evergreen tree I've ever seen in my life. This huge tree, just enormous with these branches that reached out as though they were embracing me, right in the middle of all these live oak trees. And I suddenly, I was just had chills up and down my, my spine, and I thought, that tree is Quinn, and he's different from all the other trees. He's not like the live oak trees, but he's more beautiful than any of the other trees who are there. And that changed my perspective completely about Quinn and who he was and what kind of a life he would have. Because I came back from, Washington, from the Golden Door and I came back to Washington and I looked at Quinn and I thought, how beautiful he is and how extraordinary and what an incredible person he was. So the, the following year, I was going to go out to the Golden Door and Children's Hospital scheduled another test for Quinn. And um, so I said to Ben, I, you know, I probably shouldn't go. And he said, look, it's a cognitive test. You don't, you know, I'll just go with him and sit with him and you go out there. And so I said, okay. But the day of the test, I went to the labyrinth by myself. And the, the hour that the test, I knew exactly what hour it was. And I walked the labyrinth, and then I sat in the circle of the labyrinth and meditated on Quinn the whole time. And when I came back, they called us in, and we went in, and the doctor said, you know, we have some really bad news. He did very poorly on the test, really badly on the test. However, there was one test that he scored higher than anyone we have ever tested. And I said, what was that? And they said, the maze. So I looked up the word maze, and then I looked up a maze. And a maze means to astonish, to shock, to be in awe of. And I thought, that may be the maze. Quinn is not lost. I was not lost. I was amazed by him and by what he has been, what he has become. And if you look at him today, you saw him tonight. This is the person who was never supposed to have a life or a relationship. His beautiful fiance, Fabiola, is here tonight. They're getting married on August the 4th. And, um, and he's had this extraordinary life. And And as he said in the film, Ben used to say to him, you know, nose down, ass up, push forward. And he has. And I think that for every parent and every child, just to know that you have to have confidence in yourself and you have to believe in yourself and, and believe in your child. And it works. As you've heard, all of the people here tonight who've spoken, they all talk about the support they had. And so, I mean, I have hope that I've given Quinn the support he needs. And I know Ben did. You saw Ben was a fantastic father. And I know that NCLD has given and will continue to give an enormous amount of support to all of these children and now adults who need their help and will continue to need their help throughout their lives. So I want to thank you all very much for being here and for your support for NCLD. Thank you.